And that taller tree there is an ash tree that I'm going to remove here now. Um, you can see it's pretty spindly and whatnot. Nothing major. Just uh, got to be careful not to throw anything onto there. Really, I'm going to be making the majority of these cuts with my handsaw and um, throwing everything down near this big rock. And it's just going to be a nice, neat stack when I'm done. It's the tree from another angle. Okay. I'm also going to be taking a little bit off of this little maple tree here just to make sure it's um, not shading the solar panels. Okay. Another thing, I'm using this electric saw. This is a Husky T536 LIXP. And it has this battery here. This is how you can test how much battery you have. See, it says I have three pips of battery out of four. So we'll see how it looks when I'm done. You can take a look here at how the cones lay. It's really a circle around the tree. Here's my setup today. Here's a little trick you may not have ever heard. This is a great one. Put your climbing rope through the carabiner on your spike and you won't be spiking into it. It's really nice. You know, if you put one of these into your actual rope, it's just, you know, if it damages the rope. It's, it's like throws you off your game for five seconds. It's just, why? Put a carabiner there. The rope is now trapped off to the side. It gets heavy. That foot will start to feel heavy once you're higher up. But this is a pretty shortish tree. Yeah, I say that now. I may not say that once I'm at the top. So we got a hitch climber going. Two carabiners, Micha Khan. We got a ring to ring here. The bigger ring on this side. Because when I pull my rope out of the tree at the end, I want to have that be the way it comes. I got my lanyard with a rope snap, carabiner, this little thing, it's called a shizzle, this thing, it's just, it's, it acts as a micro pulley but it weighs like almost nothing, I've been using it forever, and this is just another Michocon here. There's the saw ready to be pulled up. I'm not going to start with it. I don't even know if I'll use it or not. So I'm leaving it here off to the side um, where hopefully I'm not going to be dropping anything. Okay. And of course, helmet, high vis. We got our cones around us. Hand saw ready to go. Not in any rush today. Got a blood stopper pack right here. And part of the benefit of this is that it helps you repel out of the tree much more quickly. Um, you don't have to worry about friction and whatever else. And if I need to be rescued, then this makes it much easier for the rescuer to get me. I'm right next to the road too, so a tower truck or a bucket truck could get me from here. Okay, bye. So. I'm above the solar panels now. I'm taking my time. I'm not in any rush. Rope is still securely through that carabiner. But look at this. That's it. And now, if we were on a pine tree, remember that pine tree I showed you before? That would be one thing, but now look. This thing goes and goes and goes. Um, it's a good 15 foot top above me right there still. And it is leaning towards uh, the road and towards this wire and towards, you know, slightly towards the solar panels. Not really. So what can I do? You know, I got to manage it by hand. Or I could come down and figure something else out and do something different. But I'm just going to try and cut it real small. But I'm at peace. I'm in no rush. I'm at peace, and I'm in no rush. 
There's my lay. You can see all my brush below me there, but it's beside the road. It's going to be an easy cleanup. One piece had to go the other way. It's too heavy for me. So I had to just throw it butt first out that way, but it's okay. Nothing's been hurt, nothing's been hit. Feels good to be out again, working. I'm being, I'm going really slow. I'm just being careful. I know I'm rusty. It's good when you're rusty to know that you're rusty. So. Taking my time and I'm thinking. I'm moving in slow motion. Staying relaxed. And being smart. Whew. Okay, I just got the top out over here. Alright. You can see my spikes were right there. I just kept it really smooth and cool. And uh, that's just from the spike going in. I didn't tear it out because I just kept myself really balanced. Double wrapped my lanyard so that I wouldn't have any twist around the trunk so much. Now I still got all this to deal with. This is even more leaning over there. I got some protection from this other small maple here. And uh, this one's leaning out that way, so I'm not too worried about it. I used to just take everything off, every single limb on my way up. But as you can see, I, I'm above some of these limbs now. But the reason being, I left the ones over there protecting the solar panels. And also, it just gives me a little friction on the air. It's actually, it's wind resistance. It makes the tree move a little bit slower. Hey! There's Mary T. <laughs> there you did you walk over you walked over okay so the tops are gone there's a bunch of them a bunch of wild wild boys up here growing for the sky they're all dealt with though so now these are all pieces I can easily cut with a chainsaw and throw wherever I want so that's good um, what I have, see, you can see here, this is a spot where, I don't know if you can see that, where my uh, spike tore out as I twisted, I was, I was holding on to a piece of wood, and as it fell, it shifted my weight, excuse me, <laughs> and that uh, caused me to have my spike tear out under me. You know, it's not the best, not the worst, but really, it's not the best. I still have this piece of brush, but that's just kind of a little wind resistance. But watch how much the tree moves now. Like, can you see that? It's a totally different animal than a tree that has brush on it. All right. So, I'm not, uh, I'm not done yet because look, I left this piece down here for for now. My rope is going across it down there, you see that? I left it because I was, at the, when I went past it, I didn't have enough leverage to lift it up off of the solar panels. It's pretty low over top of them. So now I'm gonna have a high tie-in point right here. I'm not gonna move my rope down, so I'm gonna keep this. And then I can either walk out onto the limb and take a smaller piece, or who knows what I'll try and do, but that's what I'm gonna deal with. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm down here. My rope is going up there to the spar. So I have an easy rope angle here. This isn't hard to do right now. We've got this foot pushing on a stub. We've got this foot pulling on the branch. I'm right over the solar panel, but I can cut each little arm of this off easily. Throw it to my brush pile. And then I can make my way from the same tie-in point right over to the maple where uh, this frisky fella here is getting in the way of the solar too. So, it's nice when things work out. Okay, so this is a situation where my body position is actually very similar to what it was on the other limb. See my rope going up there uh, to the spar. And then over here, I'm right over top of the panel again on this low limb so you can actually see I think there's some distortion or some mildew or something on top of the solar panel there 
from being under this branch. So I'm glad I'm taking care of it. But what I want to tell you is, um, you know, if this is a roof of any sort, be it a shed or even a house, like you could probably do this with a pole saw and just kind of cut it over here and then hinge it hinge it over the roof and it may scrape right there it may scrape as it goes by but on a regular roof who cares so much but in this case you know I'm close to the ground I really am but uh, it takes it, it really pays to take the extra steps to uh, to not uh, mess something up because if you can imagine like oh I scratched your solar panel it's like you're not you're not gonna get hired again even if it is just a scratch or if maybe they're the coolest person in the world and they will hire you again, but why? Why do it? I'm over it. I'm above it. I can lift it up to me again. So. So you can see this sort of mildew here. I'm going to scrub that off with some sort of a mop. I mean, these are exposed to the rain, so water won't hurt these, right, guys? Hee <laughs> hee hoo Some sticks on there, some little twigs. I'm gonna try and sweep those off if I can reach them. That's just common sense. Okay, so I was about to rappel out of the tree because I can now, I can fit it through there. Right next to this, between there, it'll fit just fine. So it's gonna rappel down and I was gonna pull this down to myself, the friction saver. Um, but I don't have a throw line. Um, to put into it to slow it down as it comes down. So I've got to climb up and get it because if I were to yank on that and it gets all weird on me, I could be putting a friction saver sized hole through these solar panels. So something there I could have saved, you know, 10 minutes by by repelling down and dealing with the tree from the rest of the way on the ground, just felling it. You know, it could have cost me the price of the job or more. So it's worth it to slow down, figure things out, do things the right way. Because what are the chances that once I was on the ground and I realized that, I was just going to, you know, give it a try and hope for the best. Unfortunately, knowing myself, the chances are pretty good I would have tried it. But thinking ahead. Okie dokie. I know it's not pretty, but I'll admit it. I'm a small timer. This is how I do it. See how we're doing on battery. Full tree removal is done. Still at three pips of battery. So let's see if we can do the whole cleanup with just one battery too. I'm really curious about this saw. I've got it wicked sharp uh, for the reason of saving the battery and because it's nicer to use. But it's got a little bit of it's aggressive, you know. It's got a little more hook to it than than I probably should have. It's got a little bit extra reactive force, if you know what I mean. It sucks in a little more. And cutting up a lot of this stuff, uh, it's probably gonna kick the chain at some point. I, I've noticed that the chain tensioner on this uh, is not that good. Even when it's, um, even when you just tighten it, there's a little bit of, this will just sort of turn freely slightly, a little bit. So I actually ended up tightening it by putting a screwdriver through here and levering it and then tightening that while I held it. So, yeah, 